testing. See? No, this is, no, 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 this is uh, Howard Stern's dad again. Oh, it is? Yeah. I don't want any foolish answers from you, otherwise don't answer. <laughs> Shut up, sit down! That the president is doing a wise thing in going around the country asking the voters... <laughs> no, he's not doing a wise thing. Wait, wait, sorry. Democrat. This is Ponce on the phone. He's a genius at this stuff. But, yes, yes, uh, I think... What you missed here, the point that I was trying to make is the reason that the president <laughs> of the United States is asking... The more Democrats is to, so that they will support his program in Congress by voting for the issues that he's interested in. Well, that of is course. That's, I, that's I a good uh, yes, I am. I am a stupid moron. Thank you. You're not to be stupid, you moron. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Fonz Day the Fall with his Howard Stern uh, uh, bits and pieces. Again, the uh, genius man himself here on the phones. Fonz, congratulations. Another great phone call. Hi, I'm having problems with my PP. Can, can you tell me what, why it burns when I pee? My, my PP hurts. Um, well, just, um, I don't know. I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow about it. You might be able to help me. <laughs> My dog, it's Scott. <laughs> A child's world is a fragile one, and that's why you need the Ben Stern Daycare Center. If you want to turn your child into an overachieving, self-hating megalomaniac who spends his days hiding from his family and his nights masturbating, then the Ben Stern Daycare Center will work for you. Shut up! Sit down! Shut up! Sit down! Shut up! Sit down! At the Ben Stern Daycare Center, learn current events. Do you feel that the United States should remain in the United Nations as a member of the United Nations? Howard? Yes, I really do. Well, there should be peace in all the countries and we wouldn't have well, any war. Any spark of vitality will be eradicated by our professors. Because we don't want the Japs anymore. <laughs> I told you not to be stupid, you moron. Hear children being badgered into selecting a political party. I, I myself are is, is a Democrat. Are de I am a Democrat. Shut up! Sit down! If you want a son who dresses like a hell's angel and has never even ridden a moped, you need the Ben Stern Daycare Center. Let me ask you another question. Now, Howard, I don't want any foolish answers from you, otherwise don't answer. Every child is given every chance. Well, let's say, well, if you want to be religious, yeah. I think you should go to it. And also, is it, let's say... Ah, sit down! You'll hear four-year-olds intellectually bludgeoned by questions that send even William F. Buckley to the rubber room. President Kennedy now is going around the country asking the people to vote for Democrats. He wants more Democrats in the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. Do you think that the president is doing a wise thing in going around the country asking the voters to support him by electing Democrats? If you want a doctor or a lawyer, Look elsewhere. Shut up! Sit down! But if you want a sniveling mess, the Ben Stern Daycare Center is for you. Here's a typical exchange. Now not too, don't scream and don't talk not too close. When I give you the signal. What should you say? <clears throat> What's the matter? You stupid? Yeah. Spy on our founder, Uncle Ben, mumbling to himself and learn useless information that will confound you. We are now testing this out for proper modulation. As you will know, when you record, the proper modulation that is required is for the electric eye, which is a green type of tube, will open and close as we record. Now I will play this back to hear the quality 
whether, and whether this is operating. Thank you. Have your kids learn from a man who sings black show tunes like he has a head cold and a punctured eardrum. Old Man River, that old man river, he must know something. He don't say nothing. When they finally catch that new nut on the campus of the University of Florida, you can be sure that he's a graduate. These are the results of being locked in a dark room for three months. Jelly bean, jelly bean, jelly bean, I wanna know. Yes, even deaf children can be tortured as Ben cuts through on some sonic level only known to dolphins and whales. Ben, you Daycare Center, beneficial for the future of our country and the world. Uh, thank you very much. The Ben Care Stern Day Center. What's that? You stupid? Why? Yeah. Shut up! Sit down! That's enough monkeying around here. It plays me hard. <laughs> oh, good. And the t shirt can come off. All right? Yeah. Thank you. Howard. Oh, let him sing. You don't talk. Yeah, I'm digging this. Yeah. Hey. Let's go back, B. <laughs> <laughs> okay. number. The, the biggest whore on two feet is Rush Limbaugh. Ugh. It's unbelievable what that guy does. I mean, he, he you know, he knows that his career is not going to last. It's only a guy who sells that much junk. I told you, for 129 bucks, he was selling on his TV show. I've seen his TV show I once. That, so I, 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 I saw his show once. On. I saw right. it one time. And on the show, this is just one time, he was selling five different products. Of his own. Yeah. He got some poor slob, I guess, snookered into a uh, thing where he sells a Rush Limbaugh taping system so you can tape his radio show without interruptions, which costs you 129 bucks. In other words, it's a tape recorder. Same but I guess he, as every other tape recorder. You have to flip the tape or whatever. But it looks like this big, bulky, black thing. And now every tape, you could go buy a tape recorder for like $12. You could record his show on your VCR. Mm-hmm. Six hour tape. But he's, I mean, I would feel guilty selling my audience that stuff. I don't know, I just would. Rush has no shame. He has no shame whatsoever. I, he, he was selling all in one show a newsletter, a, uh, a radio taper, this Rush Limbaugh radio tape machine. And yeah, I know it's America, and I know that, you know, you can sell people whatever you want, but at some point, have a little pride in your career. You big Why fat he toad. Have pride in his career. It's true. His career is my career. <laughs> Be serious. Yeah. The pumpkin head boom box. <laughs> yeah, if they sold a big head and his mouth opens, you put a tape in it. I'd buy that. I mean, this guy's so <laughs> thrilled to be making a living. That's why when I start this Howard Stern Radio Network, I'm going to put someone on to kick his put ass. Him out of business. We're going to end that little empire. Unfortunately, it's a little late. He's already made fifty billion dollars. Yeah, but he's probably spent all of his money too. On food. <laughs> and the special high toilet seat. Then he was selling his newsletter. Newsletter. And then even like his second book. Man, he could never write another book because the second book sucks so bad. So did the first one, quite frankly. Yeah, but everybody rushed out to get that because they yeah. didn't know it. They didn't know. They thought, hey, man, hey the guy wrote a book. Maybe it would be funny or something. And it sucked. It was, <laughs> they couldn't read it. <laughs> It's unreadable. <laughs> you just can't read it. It's, it's like listening to Minister Farrakhan. <laughs> you know, I believe this is the way things should be. I believe in a conservative country that the supply-side economics will, you know, it's like... You know, just because he believes that technology will always outstrip uh, pollution, he <laughs> thinks we should continue to pollute. Yeah, I don't, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what's in that book. 
because my publisher was his publisher, and they gave me a copy to read. They go, why don't you just go read it? And between you and me, the publisher even says, see if you can get through it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bore fest. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, really? It's that bad? Here, you see if you can go through because it. Because I had never heard him. Now I hear him when I'm driving in my car, because sometimes I, you know, I hear him in the car, and because there's nothing on against him. And it's the same thing every day. The Republicans can do no wrong. The Democrats suck. I mean, yeah, okay, so that's cool. It's fun for a while, but it's all boring. And then it's... Yeah. <laughs> the feminazis. Yeah. Every day with the, you know, the same stupid... Like he has five ideas that he keeps just recycling <laughs> over and over again. Cigars. Yeah, I don't know, man. He's just so distasteful and repugnant. And so fat and smelly. Well, you don't know if he smells. You've never been near him. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, he's sweating and... He might hose down real good. Yeah. I got a guy who can kick his ass. In fact, this guy competes against him already in a couple of markets and yeah. beats his ass. So I'm, I, I've already contacted the guy about being my midday guy. I heard a couple of Hooters waitresses beat him at some market. Yeah. <laughs> One market, they put him on Hooters waitresses against him. And it, it's not hard to beat. It's just that there's nobody else on. I don't say there's anybody great in radio. I mean, like, we, you know, we've had to go into markets where guys at least had big ratings and go up and chop them down. Yeah. You know, and everybody has their own approach. Like, the Bella wouldn't uh, talk about us on the air. We beat him. The Mark and Brian wouldn't talk about it. And the girl cow was screaming how he had won after three months. And then after six months, we already were within a point of beating him. He, he would have taken him down fast. There's nobody around that could beat us, but Pumpkinhead can be beaten by anybody. Because <laughs> he's boring. He's a bore. He's big and he's fat and he's, he's boring and lazy. You really would not want to spend any time with if he was not on the air. You're right. Think about that. Oh, I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. That's good. Cancellation of his visit to the Philippines. Emory King is at the White House this morning. Emory, has the White House more or less set the stage to scrap the trip? Hey, how do I know, Connie? Oh, my God. I'm very sorry, Connie. Good morning. The White House has obviously kept a very close eye on the situation in the Philippines. Excellent. <laughs> and here's the other thing that I maintained all along. If you've ever listened to me when I was on with Howard, I never, I never said anything. And uh, when Howard wanted to know of uh, various different things that I did over there, I said I don't want to get into it. Right, right. I did my job like anybody else, that's all. Right. Well, I did my job. That's what Howard was saying this morning. I did my job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, right. I, and this guy's making it like, you know, I didn't do anything. What, what, you know, I want to know who the hell this guy is. Yeah, who the hell he is. Right. That's what I was thinking, too. You know? And then the guy's, then the guy's coming off with this crap about, uh, you know, he sat out on Yankee Station. Well, that was 25, 30 miles out. That's where the aircraft carriers used to sit because you have them sit out there because you don't want them to get endangered. Yeah, right. I heard you talking about that. Now, number two is, uh, if that be the case, the guy did his job. Let me tell you about those aircraft carriers. There was a thing called the Oriskany and the Forrestal, USS <laughs> Forrestal. Two of the worst horrific fires ever. One took out 40-some guys. Wow. Now, you tell me these guys didn't put their asses on the line? Hey, What's I'm the difference if you get shot in the head and you're, you're next to your buddy and all of a sudden one minute his brains are all in your lap? Yeah, right. Or a guy gets burned to crisp because he's sitting out on Yankee Station and he's doing his job. You tell me what's the difference because as far as I know, dead is dead. Right. And 50,000 of them I got their names on a wall down in goddamn Washington. Now, is that not the deal? No, I, hey, I'm... All right, so that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. You want to hear a song? No. Now, before I take any questions, I want to put down some simple ground rules. I will not be verbally insulted or assaulted, and I will not respond to sarcasm or absurdity. Apart from that, I will try to answer your questions as best I can. Jennifer... What are the distinguishing features of Bill Clinton's penis that Paula Jones claims she can't describe? I have no comment about that. Next. 
Are you jealous of Paula Jones? Absolutely not. Will your sister be sleeping with Roger Clinton? Did you hear what I said about absurd questions? That means you, and that means that's enough. Now, anyone else that wants to ask me a reasonable question, please do so now. If not, this will be over. Jennifer, so what are you going to to come out in court, I think. What are you going to give this arrest? Thank you. Jennifer, Next. should Jackie O have been buried next to John Kennedy? Someone else, please. Let me tell you something. I've been out there for the last two and a half years, and it's my opinion that people definitely care about me and this situation. Well, you wouldn't be the first reporter to be inaccurate in my book, dear. Next. Uh, th this will be all for today. Jennifer, and I want Jennifer, to what was Clinton's so favorite position? I want to thank you so much for coming. So our phone, hospital phone this morning, had a phone call, a phony phone call replayed on the Howard Stern broadcast over broadcast radio in which Ponsilla phone posed the question to Kathleen Sullivan, can you shake your, again, dairy air? for Howard Stern. It was unbelievable. As far as I'm concerned, this was probably the lowest point in broadcast history I've ever, ever been witness to. We have online Ponce to a phone. He's issuing an apology for his actions. I hope for he will never be doing this type of uh, thing again, not only uh, to Kathleen Sullivan, but also to any other broadcaster in the field today. It was an unbelievable thing that happened this morning. I almost drove off of the freeway. And again, I believe, I believe, although we have a different opinion from Roger of Fairfax, Virginia, but I believe not only does Howard Stern approve, not only does he condone this, I believe he is actually secretly sending out hidden messages. I think so too, Paul. I really, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to stop listening to this show. I'm, I'm really embarrassed to what I did. It's not right what I did to Kathleen. She's been in the business for, what, 20 years? I should, it's not right. And I just want to apologize to her, E, and anybody who, who happened to listen to that. It's, I, I'm just sick of the whole thing at this point. It's, a, it's like, it's, it's almost getting to the point of where I'm turning into some, like, evil character, and I don't like it. Ponce, one thing I'm sure you must admire Kathleen Sullivan for, she took immediate responsibility. She offered an apology as editorial supervisor of the program, the OJ trial coverage on e-entertainment television. She said she would not have put the call on the air if she had screened that call herself. I think it was a very, very big of her to, again, uh, admit that fact and, again, take control of the situation. And you, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to offer my services to anybody, any show that wants me to help, maybe help screen the, the phone calls for free, and maybe teaching the secrets of the Howard Stern callers to try to, you know, get them from calling in. I really want to stop doing this. I think it's, it's, it's terrible what I did. Well, Ponce, hopefully you have changed your ways. You know what? I'm, I'm really planning to get seek counseling, too. You know, it's... it's, it's I think it's a sickness. I really do. It's like almost like a disease. Well, Ponce, I've heard about people that have had a problem not only making uh, obscene but harassing phone calls. Yes. And it is uh, indeed, uh, it does become an addiction. You believe me, don't you? Of course I believe you. I, I believe exactly what you're telling me. I, I, if, I had, if I had done what you had done and then garnished the response from a well-known, reputable news anchor like Kathleen Sullivan, I indeed would have felt ashamed, not only ashamed, yes. but embarrassed not only for myself, but for my family, my friends. I deserve the tongue lashing that you're giving me. I really do. Well, Ponce, hopefully uh, you have changed your ways. I, I believe you have. And you know what? It really means a lot to me that, that you do believe me. And the, only thing I, oh, the last thing I want to say is, can you shake your derriere for Howard Stern? Ladies and gentlemen... You have just witnessed a prank phone call by a listener of Howard Stern. A program gives out a telephone number inviting participation from the listening audience.
And rather than dealing out a serious question, a concern, even a up idea or, or topic for discussion, this gentleman pawns to the phone, decides to play games. As far as I'm concerned, it was a complete waste of our time. Please accept my apology. Wars and he's going to spin them out of existence and almost spit this country out of existence. So I think that what is wrong with it is not simply uh, that they get control, but that it is the con job finally fiscally because now, it doesn't the risk work of out. being petty. I'm going to bring something up that bothers me: an aluminum plaque on Highway 295 honoring Howard Stern. It shows him peeking out of an outhouse because he supported Whitman for governor and this is her, her way of rewarding him. This is, that makes me angry. This is populist government at its best. He's a foul-mouthed jerk. Well, he had a better seat on the stand up he, there in New York than he, did uh, He also Julian. probably did as much to elect Pataki those last few mornings and Whitman. And you know what, Jim? I hate to say this. I'd love to have his numbers right now. <laughs> I know what you're saying, but I still don't like it. Hold it. The next man makes a move, the nigger gets it. Hold it, man. He's not bluffing. Listen to him, man. He's just crazy enough to do it. Rob it. Or I swear I'll blow this nigger's head all over this town. Oh, Lordy, Lord, he's desperate. Do what he say. Do what he say. Isn't anybody going to help that poor man? Hush, Harriet. That's a sure way to get him killed. Oh, oh, help me. Help me. Help me. Somebody help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Shut up. tax break for the rich, then then you and I can, can sit down and work out a budget that will work and will balance in seven years. We have no problem with that. I'm not near as rich as yourself. And well, I'm not near the rich either. I, I said I'm not near as rich as you. Okay. What's going on out there? They're trying to convince me that this guy doesn't have CP, that he just got, you know, that he drank a lot, and that's why he's talking <laughs> like this. Come, on. Yeah, come here. Stay I right. thought you had the wheelchair. You're not the wheelchair guy. Hey. No. Yeah. You got the... How uh, do you... No, no, no. You're not in a wheelchair. Uh, no, no, no. He's not no, sure no. anymore. I didn't realize that. I, he no. got out of the wheelchair. You smell the alcohol? Well, listen, these oh, guys were out since alcohol. 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> not me, not me. Oh, you get right to the front of the line because you got CP, right? Yes, yeah, it. Yeah, it works it. for you, that's right? It. Yeah, see? This guy knows. <laughs> yeah. Smart guy. That's it. Smart guy. Uses the CP thing. <laughs> Sometimes I go to, like, lines and stuff, and I just go, I'm going to get in here, man. <laughs> and they're like, what's wrong with Move you? right ahead. Go to CP. <laughs> right? Yep. And that's all you got to do. You guys have normal intelligence and everything. You're just, like, locked in a, a body that uh, has a few weird things, right? No, I, I before, I was thugs, and then talking, yeah. talking, and now no more. Wow. Uh, just so yeah. He was he was smoking. You was yeah. sm oh smoking was, weed? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Not, not indeed. Smoking a pipe. You a smoked crack. a bong? Crack. You, you were smoking, oh, you smoking crack? crack? Yeah. Right. Smoking crack and get messed up. <laughs> that, oh, come that's on. What is it? Are you serious? What is it? You were a normal guy. <laughs> that's that's right. right. And then you were smoking crack and then you got yeah. like this? Yeah. Are yeah. you You're serious? Kidding. Yeah. Remember that's on, it. Remember on Wall Street and he was the first line. He waited there for two days. And I told you I said I had to talk for him because. He couldn't talk too good. Right. He told me. It took me almost three hours to figure out what he was saying. That time I was waiting online. He was there from Saturday. I got there Sunday at like 11 o'clock the day before the book signing. Yeah. So I was talking to him to find out what was wrong. And that's what he told me. He told me he was getting high. Oh, really? You know, that's like, you see how your hand is kind of messed up? That's like cerebral palsy, right? No, I don't know. But I guess that's what happened. Well, you can do that. I mean, if you get central nervous system damage, you really? can uh, have that. Sure. I mean, he's telling you the truth. I mean, Let me yeah, get this straight. Yeah, so you were a regular guy. Uh, yeah. You didn't have any CP growing up Talked or anything? No. Perfectly and everything. So then yeah. you got into some crack. How yeah. old were you when you started smoking crack? Uh, like, like... <laughs> All right, I'll lie. You gotta use, you gotta count on his hands. Count any fingers. I don't care. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Twenty years old. Yeah. And I think he's, I think twenty. Again. Wait. Go ahead. One, two. That's one. Yeah. One, two. One. Two. <laughs> Can't you just tell me the number of how old you were when you started smoking crack? How old? Uh, oh, you can't say the number? No, because now I'm, I'm nervous. 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 But yeah. one, 
One, one, two. two. Jack, you got a pencil? Twelve. Yeah. And what do you mean? You can't say the number, but you... Yeah. Twenty-five? Oh, twenty-five. You were right, that's Robin. Twenty-five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I'm man, you, that crack I'm really messed you no, up. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's, that's okay. That's it. That's cool, man. Don't worry, yeah. man. We're digging it. Yeah. I thought you had CP. Oh, no. I mean, that's what no. everybody kept saying. He told no. me. It's cooler, I guess, to tell chicks you were on crack than to well, say you had uh, CP, right? No, I think well, he's married. Right. I'm married. And so now he's now married. dogs now. You're divorced? Yeah. 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 Oh. What's the matter? Your wife uh, oh, wasn't into it? It was a disaster. She didn't understand I don't know what's with these bitches, you know? They just, they don't they don't appreciate a man who's done some crack. He got a little mad. Dude, you mean you were smoking a lot of crack, and then all of a sudden you started talking like this? Yep. No, all of a sudden. Did they send you to the hospital? That's all, yeah. They did? I was okay. I was just walking, and all of a sudden, I just, I don't know. <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> Man. So. Cool. And you used to be able to read and everything, and now you can't? Yeah. yeah. Wow, Robin. So what do you do now? Just go to my, go with somebody's my book. How many books did you buy? Two. Let me see. You want me to sign them? Yeah, yeah I was the first one. Yeah, but he doesn't have a job or anything. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, he didn't. How could he have a job? What kind <laughs> I of job? Maybe there's have? something he could do. This guy's a whole mess there. <laughs> Jeez. So you were the first guy to buy the book? Yeah. No yeah. kidding. Yep. And what'd you do? You went and told everyone you had CP and they felt bad for you? I don't know. I just come on. I gotta. What, you, did you go? Like, cause you weren't the first online, but they let you jump to the headline. No, no, he was the first, first online. Time. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. He thought he was waiting for kiss tickets. Uh, no. No. no, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, you knew what you were there for. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened? Like, were you smart in school and everything? Like, when, no? Nah, no? No. So you didn't nah. lose much? No, no, no. <laughs> and how'd you get into crack? A lot of people think just black people smoke crack. He's uh, a white guy, me Robin. Me too. Me too. You did too, right? Yeah. Oh. And now I am sorry. I am sorry. You are sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't now, do you have kids? <laughs> I would be sorry yeah. too. You, you got have kids. kids? But now I'm a divorced do now. You divorced? Yeah. Yeah. So. How long were you married? Uh. <laughs> Oh, come on now. Uh -oh. Uh, How many years were you married? Number. Come on. Come, come on, on, man. You can do it. Wait, How many wait, years wait. were you married? Uh oh, he's messed up with numbers. Go ahead. How many yeah. years? Go ahead. Five. Five is ten. Thirteen years. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you count the thumb. I wasn't sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. How come you can't say thirteen? Uh, because uh, I got The number plays got messed up. That That's it. That's it. You mean you can't say numbers, but you can spell them out with your hands? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Boy, wow. crack really does something incredible. to you. That is It must have been a good high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was it was it good? Yeah. No? No. Oh. No. When he was doing it, it was good. It was yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> what kind of job did Son. you have? Uh, uh, I was uh, talking that... Uh, uh, he was a, uh, a, a speech therapist, I believe. <laughs> no, come on. No, what were you? I don't know. Rug Construction? Rug salesman? You were a jacket manufacturer? Sold rug. You cleaned rugs. Rug. Not dogs. I, I clean floors. floors. Right. Floors? This is like, you know what this is like? Oh, no. Man. It's a charade. It's a charade. He's talking. Yeah. <laughs> Do me a favor. Like, act it out. Howard, it's like Lassie coming back to tell where Timmy is. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, just imagine you get into trouble, and this is the guy who comes to help you yeah. out. And he goes to get help. He can't explain. He's, he's like laughing. He's, he's in the cave. He's what in is wait. All right, wait. You got a card here. Give me that card. Yeah. All right, that's not fair. That's cheating. Oh, uh, that's. You that's were crazy. a, you were district council of New York City. Yeah. Oh God, I'm in a district council. That's you a, re, a, a resilient floor coverer. Yes. You were in a union. Don't union. You were in the union. Yeah. And you were a, a floor coverer. Yeah. You would cover the floor. Yeah. What kind of job is that? <laughs> what do you do? What do you mean cover oh. the floor? What do you like tile and yeah? Oh, you would tile. Oh, rugs and things Dog like that. You can't do that anymore. Oh, no, no. What you oh, say? We're, yes, we have to do them from three till seven in the morning. The shows when we go out there in Los Angeles. Because at one point I know there was some consideration about doing them from six to ten, and I thought that'll never work. It, of course not. That was Baba Bowie's idea, <laughs> and I got him on the phone. I got everyone on there. I said Baba Bowie has some idea on how we can do the shows from six to ten out in Los Angeles. Yeah, so he gets on the phone right in this big meeting. I got a whole bunch of people. My producer is yeah. now on. I go, okay, Gary, what's your plan? <laughs> well, see, Wolf, I was thinking if we go out Tuesday after the show, we get out Wednesday, we, you know, we, we fly Wednesday, we take off the radio Wednesday. Thursday, we do the show from 6 to 10 and air it Friday. So I said, now, what, do you, what about Thursday? So we missed well, two days of the Yeah, and I go, you mean we're going to go out to Los Angeles and only be on one day? <laughs> no, we would have done two shows. Oh, yeah, and then we'll air the other one on Monday. And I what go, will we do on Monday? But I go, Boy. but Baba Booey, we'll be back in New York on Monday. We could do the show live. Oh, 
Howard, we do that all the time. <laughs> Howard, we do that all we're the time. We're going to go out for one day when I'm, when I'm doing the middle of tonight show appearances, book signings, all kinds of wild stuff. Right. And we're going to be talking about it after it all happens. Fine. Fine. I Listen. <laughs> So after he got off the phone, I was just like, listen, I apologize for, you know, wasting everybody's time. I thought the guy got me excited. Hello, Mother Angelica. Where are you from? I'm from Pennsylvania. My name is Clarice. And what is your question? My question is, would you spread for Baba Booey? Would you what? It's one of those uh, bad calls again. You know, I think so many of you out there are so sick, so sick. And you, you don't really realize how sick you are when you call this station and speak to me and my guest in an insulting manner. Uh, I, I think in your mind you don't know any better mm-hmm. and I hope and pray Police. that you will look at you yourself and think again of the dignity and love with which God made you and that you are reducing yourself to an animal. All right, get out there. King calling me um, on our phone, which should be on the, which should be on the line. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Lewis. What do you think of Howard Stern, the radio personality? How you like them apples? I don't think we got Larry King, no. I think it was a phony. Well, you know, we do this show. It's life and death and it's important, but you're always going to get a schmuck out there. <laughs> That's okay. What the hell? It's what makes the world go round. They sucked you in pretty good, folks. If Larry King was really going to call me, he'd have called me on my private phone in the dressing room. Okay, we've been had. Howard, you're very funny. You're very clever. Thank you. You have uh, a wonderful program uh, because it's your own style. All right, here's Ed Koch, former mayor of New York City. All right. Here we go. Hey, Ed, can we ask you a question for the reaction curator? How are you doing? Um, isn't the motion picture medium dominated by people with Jewish last names? Is it? Uh, uh, assume for a moment that that were true. What's the point of it? I'm just asking you. I don't know. I right. haven't looked at the names. Don't you feel guilty being here in light of what happened to Ishtak Rabin? I think you're a schmuck. Thank you, Ed. Hey, thanks a lot, Ed. <laughs> thanks a lot, Ed. <laughs> Ishtak. <laughs> Say that again. It's cock Rabin. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. It's cock Rabin. So anyway, Stuttering John went out with, uh, you know, his camera crew and everything and ran into Don Cornelius and started asking him some questions. And Don Cornelius went ballistic on you. Yeah, and I had no idea he would, that he would react this way. Well, you could understand why. I mean, the man had a dance show. I mean, this is a guy who did something really important for broadcasting. He had a dance program. <laughs> And he was incredible on it. He was an incredible innovator. In fact, one time I saw him, he went up to a band. A band had just finished performing, doing a live uh, session. And he went up to the band and he said, So why don't you introduce yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> one time. He did that every week. Are you kidding, Rob? twice or three times a show. Oh, I thought that was awfully innovative. <laughs> he was too lazy to learn their names. Do you know what I- yeah, so anyway, uh, John, of course, was there on this momentous occasion when Don Cornelius was to be... Getting worried. Who left the freight <laughs> for his contribution? <laughs> Don should have been happy to see you. Yeah. <laughs> what is it on, this one? Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. How are you? Okay. Let me ask you, uh, do you hate Jews like Farrakhan hates Jews? What? Do you hate Jews like Farrakhan hates Jews? 
Why would you even ask me a question like that? Because Farrakhan said, you know, that all Jews are, um, you know, um, uh, what was the, uh, is, uh, the exact word again? Evil? <laughs> you tell John's getting real nervous already. <laughs> He's like, you know, he sees it's not going well. What did he say? You know, Farrakhan said something, right? Uh, uh, yeah, because yeah, he said, well, uh, someone help me out with these exact words. <laughs> it's already sinking. <laughs> you don't even have your stupid teeth in. <laughs> All Jews are, um, you know, um, uh, what was the exact, uh, is, uh, the exact word again? Evil? Well, you know, I'm insulted that you would What's even up? approach me with a question like that, okay? that That's an absurd subject and an absurd question okay if you have a farrakhan fetish or a farrakhan problem or a farrakhan fixation uh play it off someplace else i don't want to talk about that okay i want to talk about i didn't know it would offend you I'm, I'm it doesn't just... offend me it's just an absurd Blood suck is approach what he said. well that has nothing to do with, with me and uh, obviously, you have a preoccupation with Farrakhan, and I, and I think you, uh, you are... He just asked one question. It's what preoccupation? Right. It's all right. Go away. <laughs> Walk away. No, but the point is, like, you know, he's, Farrakhan was in the news. What do you think of Farrakhan calling people bloodsuckers? Well, you can't read, you know, but the guy's obviously upset by this question. I don't yeah. know why he's staying here. Well, though. he's going he's gonna to make sure John understands why he's upset. This is the most... Anybody's ever gotten out of Don Cornelius. This is as verbose as I've ever heard of. Well, this is the most ridiculous question. It's just an absurd Blood suck is approach. What he said. Well, that has nothing to do with, with me. We didn't say it did. And uh, obviously, you have a preoccupation with Farrakhan, and I and I think you, uh, you <laughs> ought to. Well, I was at the Million Man March. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, that doesn't help at all. <laughs> Some of my best friends are Negroes. <laughs> yeah. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Right. I was at the Million Man March, and he's going, mm, "Look at this little white boy." <laughs> <laughs> at the William Man March. Go so with the police. Yeah. Right on, I'm with you. Uh, you ought to... Well, I was at the Million Man March. So. Yeah, well, I, 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 I support the Million Man March. I was there, man. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I was just a little what, offended what, by something. All right, you know, what's your next question? Well, okay. why, why don't you get your soapbox, man? Okay. And just, uh, okay just, no, uh, no. Are you a news guy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you a, a Farrakhan uh, campaigner? What, 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 what the soapbox? He just asked him one question. He's the guy in the soapbox. He is on a on a rampage. <laughs> are you a Farrakhan uh, spokesperson? <laughs> Footbox, man. Okay. Just, no, okay, just, no, uh, no. Are you a news guy? Uh, yeah. Are you a, a Farrakhan uh, campaigner? Where, where, I'm not a Farrakhan campaigner, but you know what? Let's don't talk about Farrakhan anymore. You uh, brought it up. No, right? no, I, I, it doesn't seem like you want to talk about it, so I don't want to talk about anything that you want to talk about. Why would I want to talk about Farrakhan? No, I don't think you do. You think all black guys uh, have a? <laughs> a do you think all black guys have an opinion uh, or some kind of uh, food to feed you about Farrakhan? Well, only, That's because, your problem? only only because. That's a very racist no, no, way to no, approach only a guy be, only because, that's here because I got 25 no years in television. No, only, you only, walk up to me and ask me a dumbass <laughs> fair kind of question. No, no, only because God okay, why don't you back off and let, let a reporter talk to done, me, okay? Toronto no, reporter. That's not racist. Are you being racist. You racist. No, you're being you're racist. racist. That's not a racist question. <laughs> and John was racist. trying to be as nice as he could be, and he's just getting angry. Yeah, and right. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That's not a racist question. That's not a racist question. You want Farrakhan? You know where to find him. I just asked you about Farrakhan. Why can't you answer that? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Farrakhan is a bad question, suddenly. <laughs> it wasn't a racist question. <laughs> Who are you talking to at this oh, point? The cameraman. Oh. <laughs> so what did Don Cornelius say? So, uh, Sorry. So he, uh, this guy, Frank DiGiacomo, who works for the New York Observer, he does a gossip column. So he called Don Cornelius to interview him about it. Yeah. And Don Cornelius' exact quote was that John might as well have asked him, do you eat watermelon the way other niggers eat watermelon? That was my oh, next question. What? That was That's my next problem. question. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great if you said, excuse me, Mr. Cornelius, uh, let me ask you another question. Do you eat watermelon? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's funny. That, he sees that as the same. Asking him what his opinions are on Farrakhan. Right. And is the same as asking a guy, 
are, are, are you uh, a nigger eating watermelon? Right. And, and mind you, this is an a, a watermelon eating nigger. nigger. Whatever. Frank, Frank interviewed him the next day, so he had some time to sleep on it, get over it. You know, oh, I, no, he's still oh, angry. He's, he's still angry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bob Balf. All right. Who <laughs> left the phrase, welcome to my nightmare? <laughs> oh, one second. Welcome to my nightmare. I'm Boy Gary's answering machine and Charlie. Who is Joey Ramon? It was Joey Ramon. That's right. Everyone remembers this moment. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Hi, Gary. It's Joey Ramon. Will you pick up the phone? Will you wake about it? Wake about it off your nightmare there. <laughs> Welcome to my name, man. <laughs> Here it is. I want to speak to Spen. Uh, uh, <laughs> Drug is he on? <laughs> Joy Ramon, brother. A coming. great performance. Yes. <laughs> Everybody loves it. <laughs> See you up for now. From Teresa, who I believe was our first caller in. Welcome to the program, Teresa. This is Mother Teresa speaking from the bed. I'm got it. I don't want me yet, man. I got more feet to taste. I don't get it. Make a key. I don't get it. <laughs> is this supposed to be funny? Can it be? Is this supposed to be funny? Tell <laughs> 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 Beard. Oh my God! How, how, how much longer should we allow this ridiculous? Yeah, I, love you. I know what we heard. I know exactly what we heard. Will you explain it to us? This is just snippets from the Howard Stern broadcast. <laughs> no, it's snippets. Stuttering John with Charles Oakley. Charles, can we ask your question? WXRK Radio. For who? WXRK Radio. Brother had the sign for us. What's the, what's the question? She said it was all right. Huh? She said it was all right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Do you think that Hakeem Olajuwon got good from chasing tigers? He got what? Do you think Hakeem Olajuwon got good from chasing tigers? I don't know. I can really say. Uh, you know, I don't know what he chased. You know, I don't really know a lot of background on Hakeem. Um, what do you think about OJ, innocent or guilt? I don't know. I don't know. Can't comment on that. Who is more annoying? Who is the more annoying fan, Spike Lee or Woody Allen? Um, neither one bothered me. <laughs> do you think that Pat Ewing has a career after basketball as a male model? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> you asked me like weird questions, man. Um, you want to ask me some questions? Ask me some wisdom questions. Okay, how do you answer the charges that Pat Riley is arrogant? I can't answer that. Um, do you ever say to yourself, boy, do I have a dumb job? I don't answer that. Okay, man, come on, you want to ask me questions? You, you ask me all this stupid Thanks. Come here, please. All right, Charles, thanks. All right, bye. Big fan. Why are you asking me all this stuff? Well, well this, is, uh, this is the Howard Stern show. Well, I don't, that's why I'm stupid. All right, take care, Charles. Would you go to my dentist? I'm going today. I have an appointment today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can take care of you a little bit later on. After that appointment I have with Gary Coleman this morning, I'm a pretty...